Welcome back to the Victorian Thimble. My name is Cassie, and today we're making a Victorian walking skirt. Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, excuse my relaxed Sunday look here. Anyways, I have just purchased and printed out this Victorian walking skirt. Oh my goodness, 135 pages of patterns and instructions to put together. So it's actually gonna be a really fun project to do. It's one of the ones I showed you in my video um, of projected projects for 2021. But this is gonna take some good amount of scotch tape and some time. Here we go. And so we begin by laying out all the pieces of paper in order as they printed out so that I can tape them together. Now you see they are taped together and we're getting ready to cut out all the various pattern pieces. This actually took several hours to get all of this taped together. Hey YouTube, welcome back. And I must say it's been a bit of effort getting here um, just because the pattern, I decided to shorten it and it was a little bit challenging. So I'll just show you here with the main pattern pieces. You got the skirt front, the skirt back, and the skirt side. And if you look at the back, look how much I folded up, right? Like, so I've shortened the pattern quite a bit and to try and get the hem the correct length for that um, faced hem that this skirt design has, it took quite a while where I think maybe sometimes you might just cut your pattern two or three inches longer and say, I'll just even it off when I'm done. You can't really do that with this design. And so, I'm satisfied now with where I have those pieces. So my next step is to read the instructions that I have printed out for making the skirt. I have my navy blue fabric pressed. I have my navy blue lining thread. I have matching lining fabric. I have matching thread. I have um, interfacing. I have like everything ready to go to start the skirt. Let's see what's next. The next thing that I did was measure all the pattern pieces to be 26 and a half inches long each. Then I tested it out pinned together just to see if things were hanging straight. It has taken me several hours actually to get the three main parts of this so that they are 26 and a half inches each. I wanted to give myself that little extra bit of play in case I do make a measuring mistake. I have that extra half inch to work with, but worst case, my skirt's a half inch longer than the anticipated 26 inches. So I've taken a lot of time perfecting those pieces. So let's see what we do next. The next thing I did was take some time to read over the optimal pattern layout for the fabric. Then I took the wool and I pressed it so that it would be smooth and even, no wrinkles. Next, I laid out all the pattern pieces and it was time to actually cut out the fabric with the pattern pieces. Once everything was cut out, the lining and the fabric, I pinned each lining piece to each fabric piece. This is a method that's called flat lining where you attach the lining and the fabric together at the start of the sewing project, and then you sew the rest of the project as if it was one piece. It's quite a clever way to do it, actually. Once it was pinned together, here you can see the wool side of the fabric and the lining side together, pinned as accurately as possible. Once the two layers were sewn together, I take the pattern piece back out and I do all the chalk markings for where the pleats at the back of the skirt are going to be. This process took a little while to do. You have to take your time and make sure everything is pretty accurate. I marked the fronts and backs of the fabric where required on the lining and the wool so that I could figure out exactly where I was pleating everything. 
and here it is with all the chalk marks done. Then I folded all the pleats as per the directions so that they would be ready to sew. Here's my skirt backing pinned with the pleats in place ready to be sewn. So naturally the next thing that I did was baste those pleats into place so that I could begin the skirt project. Next, it was time to apply the plackets to the back of the skirt. I added the facing and stitched them in place and pressed as required by the directions as you can see here. Next, what I did as per the directions was I hand stitched these facings down onto themselves with near invisible stitches so that it's inside the skirt and then the placket is closed. And now it's time for that secret Victorian pocket. I took one half of the pocket each and stitched it to the side and back of the skirts as shown in the directions. Once I had that sewn, I stitched the two pocket sides together and then I went around and stitched all of that closed so that it takes on the shape of a pocket. And now it's time to run that seam down the side of the skirt to close that area where the pocket was. Here now you can see that secret pocket neatly pressed. It lays down beautifully. The installation of the pocket went great. There it is from the underside. And of course you can see that lining fabric there as well. The next thing that we did was the flat felled seams. So this is where we're covering the seams so that they won't unravel. I trimmed away one half of the seam allowance on one side. Then I pinned it here as shown so that I was ready to hand stitch it down. Now here you can see the pinned place and that I'm hand stitching this down. This did take quite a long time. I enjoyed some movies while doing that. Next, it was time to attach the hem facing to the skirt. First, I put that interfacing onto the hem facing. I didn't have anything else in the house to use. I decided this would be good enough. And then in addition to that, I pressed these seams once I had the facing stitched on. Here it is all ready to go. You can see it's attached to the skirt. Next, we're gonna finish off this hem here. I pinned all of this facing down so that it's ready to be hemmed. This just holds it in place while I actually do the hand stitching. All of this is to be hand stitched down. So using a needle and thread, you're gonna make your knot and we're just gonna stitch all along there in small, neat, even stitches. And here is me doing some of that hand stitching. Just thought I'd show you what it looks like in action. And then finally, as an ending step, I had to sew the closure on the skirt. This is a hook and eye that's basically made for skirts and pants. I simply attached one of these onto the skirt and voila, it's ready to wear. Just another look at that hand hemming on that hem facing. Thought you'd like to see that. And now, Let's see our finished Victorian walking skirt. 